Here's everything you need to know about the December update coming to New World. There is a new icon to illustrate when a quest is a main quest and a new icon to illustrate when it's a quest relating to your professions. Your high watermark gear score is now called expertise and this will now be shown on your inventory screen for each slot as well as showing your overall total expertise average. And with this there is a new way to increase your expertise called gypsum. Essentially you're going to get gypsum from doing different kinds of tasks so you'll get a gypsum from doing outpost rush, you'll get a different form of gypsum doing corrupted portals and so on and so forth. I think there's a new temporary gypsum one called diamond gypsum which you get from the festival, the winter festival and you get that from collecting the presents from the trees in each time with the winter festival. Anyway, once you have enough gypsum, you're going to go to a kiln. Now, these kilns are actually mostly in the neutral towns, but there is actually one in Ebon Scale, which could be a decent earner for the company that owns that territory. Now, to me, the kiln itself sort of looks like, you know, some hands are opening wide a backside, but, you know, maybe I spent too much time on the internet. When you have enough gypsum of one type, you're going to go to this gypsum kiln and you're going to convert it into an orb for a smallish amount of gold and it is on a 22 hour cooldown. And then with that orb, it's gonna enable you to create a gypsum cast. Now the cast is basically one cast for each slot. So, you know, head has its own slot, the sword has its own slot, hammer has its own slot, and so on and so forth. So in the example here, I'm gonna pick a chess piece and I'm gonna create that gypsum cast. Now on the PTI, my expertise is 515. When I open this cast, we can see that it goes to 519. Now the actual item I get here isn't that good. I don't know how good the items can be from them, but you can see that it increases my expertise to 519, meaning that all of my future gear now has a higher chance of being at that level. The actual increase will be between two and five expertise, but the maximum will reduce the higher up you get. So basically you're not gonna go from 595 to 600, but when you get to 598, you'll be guaranteed to get to 600, if that makes sense. Now converting your gypsum into the orbs is on a 22 hour cooldown, and then creating these casts are also on a 22 hour cooldown. So essentially you're gonna be able to create eight gypsum orbs a day, which may get reduced to seven once the winter festival is over. And then with those orbs, you're going to be able to then create eight casts. Now, you're not going to be able to create the chest one, you know, eight times a day because it's also on a cooldown. So you'll be able to get like eight different slots if you really want to. And the main goal for most players will be to get as many gypsum orbs as they can in a day just to guarantee that watermark increase, which is now expertise. And because of this, they're essentially reducing the chance of getting expertise increases from the elite chests, but they are adding more elite areas. So they're adding one in Eden Grove, which is basically upscaling malevolence. And they're doing the same thing in Ebon Scale by upscaling the Imperial Palace. So they will now be level 66 elite zones. The next big change is to professions and they're introducing something called aptitude. This is essentially a way of leveling past 200, but instead of getting access to, you know, just crafting new things, what you're actually going to get is rewards. Now this applies to gathering, refining and crafting. And basically once you hit level 200, you'll then start seeing three notches. Now there essentially are two minor notches, which when you get the, your XP up to that point, you're going to get like a minor reward. But when you get to the third notch, the main notch, like to go to the next level, well, you're going to get like a major reward. And there is actually a decent chance of getting some really good stuff. So for furnishing, one example you could get is some trophy mats. Now that could be really, really valuable. It looks like having XP on your gathering tools may actually be fairly useful again. And so will any of the cheat ways to level up the professions. Now they're also introducing equipment patterns. These are going to drop from these reward caches that you get from the aptitude system. They are essentially guaranteed gear score 600 items with a specific appearance, but they are going to require the more powerful crafting resources. And on these patterns, you still have to roll for your perks and, you know, using craft mods and that kind of thing. However, they are actually adding something called timeless shards. These are a way of basically giving crafters more control over the items that they make because with these timeless shards, you're going to get a specific stat as well as being able to then pick the perk. Now, I won't go into much detail here, but just know that you get these timeless shards from expedition bosses as a guarantee guaranteed drop but you also can get them in expedition elite chests and the elite chests from you know the elite areas just out in the open world but that's going to be pretty damn strong because you're going to be able to say like okay i want strength and this perk and then the rest are going to be random but you know that the item itself is going to be like decent and with the professions there's actually going to be a way of converting the tier 5 mats like oracalcum into the tier 5 rare variants of that so basically 250 oracalcum will convert into one tolvium or one cinnabar and that applies for woodworking tanning etc 
And then for the Winter Convergence Festival, there's actually a couple of interesting things out there for you. The main thing to do is to check out one of the four winter villages. You'll go and speak to the Winter Wanderer. He'll sort of introduce you to the whole system kind of thing. And with the Winter Wanderer, there's actually going to be like a faction shop with some interesting rewards. For example, you can get some skins, some furnishing items, and some weapons that have luck on them. So there's actually quite a few reasons to do this if you're interested in it. The main way of actually getting your reputation up is in the world, there's going to be uh, presents to find. There's also going to be Gleamite, which are like these meteors when the the sky is the Aurora Borealis, which I can never say, so I've just mumbled it, but you know what I mean. And essentially, there's a system where you can get some tokens and you can exchange them into some premium tokens. That combined with your faction reputation, you know, it all makes sense. That's your, that's your currency and your faction reputation you need to get up. You, there's also town boards that are going to be improving the tree in each town, so... You also want to check that out as well as actually going to the tree in each town because you can get like a present there along with that there's going to be some quests in some icy caves which are going to have like some winter yetis in it and some winter mobs in there as well there's also a couple of elite caves which are like level 60 plus that you obviously probably want to take a friend to but there's like elite chests in there that you might want to check out they've added some extra quests once you've completed the main story these seem to be mostly regarding like housing so um we're not able to test that on the ptr because you'd have to literally finish the main quest and ain't nobody got time for that there are also some balance changes so the great axe lunge is being nerfed a little bit but i've got to say the great axe maybe doesn't seem quite as harmed as we all imagined at first because there are some new perks being added and some of which do seem to actually benefit the great axe a little bit However, with balance, it's actually difficult to read a patch note and know which weapons will be the, the stonking weapons and which ones will just be the crap weapons we don't really know. So once the update has been out a few weeks, I'll probably come back and we'll maybe look at which weapons are strong and which ones aren't. However, I'm personally expecting the musket and the bow to still be in the stonk category being pretty damn good. Now, one glowing omission from this video is the announcement of the downscaling gear. The reason I'm not talking about that here is because it's not actually going to apply until early 2022 and it's not actually related to this update. So for me, that's everything I think you need to know about the December New World update. Let me know if you think I missed anything, I'm sure you will. And let me know how you feel about it. For me, most of these changes are actually pretty damn positive. Have a most beautiful day. Goodbye.